Hello everyone, my name is Puyan Mojabi and I'm presenting this paper on behalf of my co-authors, Professor Lovetri and Professor Bolome. This presentation is focused on reflections on the past and future evolution of quantitative microwave imaging algorithms from the experience of the authors. Therefore, this is not an exhaustive review of all the works that have been done in this area. To begin, let us have a look at some of the microwave imaging systems developed by the authors of this paper. In all of these systems, the purpose is to collect a scattered microwave data from the irradiated object of interest and then use these measured scattered data to reconstruct a quantitative image of the relative complex permittivity profile of the object of interest. For example, the system in the center uses 24 dipole antennas and the object of interest is a human forearm. Since in this talk our focus is on quantitative microwave imaging algorithm, let us start our discussion by identifying four factors that govern the success of the inversion process. The first factor, and perhaps the most fundamental one, is the information content of the measured data. We essentially need to make sure that we have sufficient information content within our measured data to be able to reconstruct the details of interest. The other thing that we need to be able to take into account is the nonlinearity of the problem. So we essentially dealing with multiple scattering events within the object being imaged, and that represents itself as nonlinearity of the mathematical formulation that needs to be taken care of. The other aspect which is associated with the inverse problem is the imposedness of the problem, and we need to employ appropriate regularization technique to treat ill-posedness. And finally, we need to be aware that we have a physical system, we have an actual system, and we also have a model for that system. And we need to establish an appropriate link so that numerical model can represent the actual system. Let us now focus on the information content of the data. Essentially, we need to have a mechanism to ensure that the inversion process has a chance to succeed in reconstructing the details of interest. For microwave imaging, this is quite complicated as the required information content depends on the complexity of the target. And of course, the target is unknown in microwave imaging. One way to somehow handle this issue is to create a simulated known target whose overall properties are similar to the actual target and then find the induced total field within the simulated target. For example, consider this simulated known target, which let us assume that is similar to the actual target that we want to image. And also maybe perhaps the details of interest would be these three fingers, these three small fingers that we have. So if we, if we have this simulated target, we can find induced electric field in the object exactly. We know the Green's function exactly. So we can linearize this integral equation based on chi exactly, and then find the right singular vectors associated with this linearized integral equation, and then expand our target based on those right singular vectors. If we do that, using eight transmit receive based on line source assumption, then what we have would be this expansion. So this is the expansion based on those right singular vectors. And as you see, we don't have the three fingers that we were interested in. So we understand that we are lacking information. And for example, we can keep adding information by increasing the number of antennas to 16 line sources. And if you do that and then you find the right singular vectors, all of a sudden, you see that you can now capture the three fingers. Now, when we get to this, the only message here is that if you use 16 transmit receive system, there is hope that inversion algorithm would work. And remember, this is just be hoping that it would work because we may not be able to use all the right singular vectors in the inversion process. So if we do the actual inversion now on this target, this is the inversion that we get. And as you see, the three fingers are absent. So when we get to this point, we realize that we still need to keep adding information. And the, the options that we have 
is either improve signal to noise ratio or again add information content with the hope that we would be able to capture the three fingers that we are interested. There are different ways to add information to the inversion process. Perhaps the most obvious one is to increase the number of measurements and measurement diversities. For example, increase the number of transceivers, frequencies of operation, polarization, illumination patterns, and boundary conditions of the system. The second category is to use prior information about the object that we are imaging. For example, if we have knowledge about the expected permittivity value we can take advantage of that if we know not if we know prior information about the ranges of permittivity we can take advantage of that and more recently people are looking at knowledge of spatial priors a structural information about the object of interest uh, to demonstrate the last item which is a spatial priors we can look at this synthetic target that we have which is a breast model, if we do not use any prior information operating at 1 gigahertz with 36 transceivers, this is the blind inversion that we get. And now if we use a structural information derived from ultrasound tomography at three different frequencies, we can get this inversion using microwave imaging. Now, if the spatial priors coming from the ultrasound doesn't have information about these three inclusions, then this would be the inversion that we, we're going to get. So that, that actually shows the promise that a st a structural priors can have for the success of microwave imaging algorithm. Now that we have covered the information content aspect of microwave imaging, let us consider the nonlinearity aspect. There are various ways to process the measure the scattered data in microwave imaging. For example, we have EM exact formulation, we have EM based approximation formulation, and of course, we also have the growing machine learning techniques. The purpose here is not to compare these different techniques. In fact, each of them has its own advantages and disadvantages. Our purpose here is to focus on nonlinear iterative reconstruction algorithm as they can provide quantitative images of the relative complex permittivity profile of the object of interest. Within this class of techniques, we have two widely used uh, categories of techniques. Uh, the first one is the conjugate gradient based algorithm and perhaps the most widely used algorithm in this class is contrast source inversion CSI and we also have Newton based algorithm and the representative of this class is Gauss-Newton inversion GNI, the sorted born iterative method DBIM and newton Kontrovich method and in fact these uh, three techniques that I mentioned it can be shown that they are equivalent on their identical regularization scheme and line search algorithm. Another component that's crucial for the success of nonlinear inversion algorithm is how to treat the ill-posedness via regularization. To this end, we usually need to consider three factors. How to formulate our regularized data misfit cost functional? Are we going to use, for example, a multiplicative formulation or an additive formulation? Of course, these can be made equivalent, but still we need to make our decision about our formulation. The other important thing would be our regularization operator. What kind of a regularization operator we're going to use? And also, um, uh, more recently, uh, some authors have incorporated prior information in the nonlinear inversion algorithm in the form of a regularization operator. And the other aspect is how to choose the regularization weight. And we have different techniques to choose the regularization weight. And in our opinion, the, the, the most uh, successful one is the adaptive regularization weight for nonlinear inversion algorithm where the regularization weight is high in early iteration and gradually becomes a smaller in later iteration. In this slide, we consider an example that shows that regularization operator can be used to incorporate a spatial priors. For example, this is the MRI image of a human forearm. 
and that can be used to extract a structural prior information about the forearm and then we perform experimental microwave imaging at 800 megahertz and this is the image that we get when the regularization operator is equipped with spatial priors and you can compare it with the blind inversion and you see that the permittivity of bone has been improved now the important thing here is to use two levels of regularization one of them includes the prior information and the other one is generic regularizer for the blind inversion in that case if we start with the wrong and incomplete spatial priors where we have a region that does not exit and also we are missing one bone still the inversion algorithm has the capability to detect the bone that was missing in the spatial priors. Although the permittivity of that is not perfect, but you can clearly see that this is similar to the blind inversion. So it seems that for this part of the region that the spatial priors was not present, the inversion algorithm took advantage of the generic regularizer. Finally, the last component that we mentioned that governs the success of nonlinear inversion is how close our simulated system or numerical model to the actual system. In actual system, we are dealing with antennas, mutual coupling, and in the simulated system, we are dealing with models that may not incorporate some of the effects such as mutual coupling, casings, etc. So we essentially need to make a connection and there are different ways to do that is enhanced modeling, of course, would be one way. Another method that has been very successful is a scattered field calibration, where you compare the measure the scattered data from a known target with the simulated data from the same target and then uh, uh, construct calibration coefficients other example could be lossy coupling liquid that minimize reflections from the casing in scenarios where boundary conditions is assumed to be summer field radiation boundary condition other, and other techniques such as machine learning probe correction and source reconstruction method Okay, let us now consider some ongoing developments and future perspective. Of course, one promising area is machine learning, and it can be done in different ways, and various groups have contributed to this uh, research area. For example, uh, one example here is CNN1, Convolutional Neural Network 1, that gets a a reconstructed image either through, for example, nonlinear inversion or linear inversion, and then outputs an enhanced image. Or CNN2 in this case gets calibrated measured data and then output reconstructed image. Or for example, in this case, CNN3 is essentially used to calibrate the raw measured data. And then you can combine them into CNN4 and CNN5 in addition, you can do it in different ways. For example, you may take advantage of machine learning for fusion of multimodal images. For example, microwave image come here, an ultrasound image come here, and then you get one final tissue type image. And you can also use it for full clinical workflow diagnostic recommendation from microwave imaging and treatment monitoring. Uh, some other researchers have used it for uncertainty estimation and also joint optimization of hardware and software. Another area that can be useful for microwave imaging is electromagnetic metal surfaces for controlling electromagnetic fields. These metal surfaces are essentially thin structure consisting of sub-wavelength elements that can control transmitted field and reflected field due to an incident field. So, uh, for example, we can consider an ideal case scenario where metal surfaces are implemented with impedance uh, sheet. So here we have a line source that creates cylindrical wave and it interacts with metal surface one and then it interacts with metal surface two and as a result we have in this case a, a, a truncated plane wave and then we we can employ a matching metal surface to go to a water medium and then another matching metal surface to go to air and finally we can employ an absorbing metal surface to absorb the energy. And these metal surfaces can also be made controllable so we can generate 
different way fronts and per perform different operations. So potentially they can be used in microwave imaging system to enhance data uh, collection and in general irradiation of the object being imaged. If they are incorporated into microwave imaging system, then they also need to be incorporated into nonlinear inversion algorithm. And one way to do that is to use is to represent them using generalized sheet transition condition GSTC, which represent the boundary condition associated with these meta surfaces. In summary, looking toward the future, the question is what can drive microwave imaging further? From the viewpoint of nonlinear inversion algorithm, a major driving factor is to provide the inversion process with more and more information. Both machine learning algorithms and incorporation of prior information into the inversion algorithm can be regarded as methods to provide more information. On the other hand, devices based on meta surfaces and quantum detectors may be used to enrich the quality of information and enhance the signal to noise ratio of the measured data. Finally, increased computational power is always helpful to decrease the modeling error, thus enhancing the overall signal to noise ratio. Thanks for your attention.